everybody was waiting to me. I'm from New York, born in Queens, raised in the New York City area. I come down, and these people wave at me, like, what's going on here? And then I was trying to get directions to a restaurant. They were telling me, well, you go down yonder, make a turn, go down the spell, and I'm like, <laughs> this is before we had these uh, contraptions. So it was a uh, very good food, though. All home cooked food. Got out there, one of the places, like, oh, you're not fat enough. Well, I'm fat enough now. <laughs> but this is back when I was 168 pounds, now I'm 240, so a little it's different. It's under hospitality. That's right. All right, so today I'm here to talk to you about the American with Disability Act and how the resurfacing technical guidance that came out on June 28th of 2013, how it affects the way we all do business. For those of you who don't know Federal Highway, we provide the stewardship and oversight of the Federal Aid Dollar that goes out and is distributed to the states. Um, what my team does is we're providing the technical assistance with regards to this, this guidance that you brought received last year. So let's talk about the Americans with Disability Act in 1990. This is a civil rights statute that prohibits discrimination against people with all disabilities, and this also includes trans transportation. It does affect all of us. It's not just about, well, it's, it's somebody else, no, it affects our industry. The Department of Justice designated the Department of Transportation and so the Federal Highway Administration to administer and oversee the compliance of the ADA. So through our programs, we help the Department of Justice do this because they have no arm out there to the states and to the local agencies to do this effectively. So this act applies to all entities, all local agencies, all states, all towns, counties, however you want to say it, even if they are not recipients. So this law, if someone, if you're, they're not in compliance with this law, even though it's not federally funded, you can still be, get a complaint from a citizen and be held accountable. So how did this joint system come about? Well, the problem was the Department of Justice came out with a regulation, but it didn't identify specific road treatments, payment types that were when it was an alteration when it's maintenance. To the Department of Justice, and I don't know how they're built up, I don't know how many engineers they have, but to them, the only maintenance item is potholes. That's a maintenance. Everything else is an alteration. So that's what we that was our starting point. So, and you can see at the bottom of the slide it says the only pothole was maintenance. Well that's what through discussions with them, that's all they considered it. So um, back in 2012 Department of Justice and Federal Highway got together in 2013 continued conversations based on information that we were hearing from states, towns, contractors, a lot of complaints coming in about the inconsistency among the states about how the guidance was being enforced. So they came to decisions of what pavement types were maintenance and alterations based on these factors as well as perception. Because we were hearing from ADA advocates that saying, we see this huge equipment on the road. You're coming in, you're putting in whatever you're doing on the roadway, but you're not helping us with the sidewalks, you're not touching the sidewalks. They're still accessible to me in a wheelchair because there's no curb ramps. So it's based on public perception. So if you attended one of the six webinars we delivered last year, we had uh, three big turnouts at the later part of 2013, where we had over a thousand attendees hit on our, our webinar about this information. So basically, everything above the line is considered maintenance. So that's chip seals, crack filling, ceiling, diamond grinding, dowel, bar, retrofit, box seals, joint crack seals, door repair, pavement patching, scrub sealing, slurry seals, spot high friction treatment, surface sealing. Now, I know you guys can read. The reason why I'm reading it out is because those are the only treatments, those are the only treatments that the Department of Justice considers maintenance. Basically, everything else is an alteration. And those are listed below the line. 
So this policy is a single federal policy that identifies specific income tax, that alteration. So if you have an alteration, if I go back one slide, if you have an alteration, then you must put in curb ramps if there's a sidewalk or a pedestrian access route. And I'll get into that, those specifics a little bit later on. If it's maintenance, if you're doing a slurry seal, that's maintenance, then curb ramps not required at the time of the improvement. I mean, the reason why that's bolded and highlighted is because those people from uh, the local agencies in the audience or state DOTs in the audience know that it's something about an ADA transition plan. So the payment can be paid as scheduled if it's maintenance, long as the sidewalks that have to be updated to curb ramps are in the ADA transition plan. So, there's a, a, a little uh, catch with the whole uh, maintenance items. If you start trying to play games by doing a chip seal, then followed by a slurry seal, well, that's a cage seal, and cage seals are considered alterations. So you can't do back-to-back -back maintenance applications or a whole bunch of different maintenance applications to add structure, pavement structure to uh, the roadway. So, the reason why I have this slide is to emphasize this, this came up in the F webinar a lot, is people were complaining about why this type of pavement was considered maintenance, why this tape, uh, was considered an alteration. Remember, we had nothing. We went to the table with Department of Justice only had potholes. That's all. So, this negotiation got us at least one of so I came up with a slide to just run you through a scenario. If you have a new project and you know it's a slurry seal, hey, you can see with the work, this doesn't, this guy this doesn't affect anything. If it is an alteration, say we are doing a microservicing and we're doing it on the interstate. Well, guess what? There's no sidewalks. So this doesn't affect us to proceed with the work. Okay, we're now doing that microservicing lift, but it is now um, on a road with sidewalks, but it has curb ramps already, and they meet the 1991 or 2010 standards. We see the work, this doesn't affect us again. The only time this guidance affects us is if we're dealing with this, a sidewalk with no curb ramps or pedestrian access route with no sidewalk, no ramps. And we have to then at that time put install the curb ramps when we're doing our pavement job. Now, we've heard from um, paving companies like, we deal with asphalt, we don't deal with concrete. You're gonna have to hire a subcontractor come out with innovative ways to deal with that. Or the counties and states can deal with it with the fact that if they have through their ADA transition plan, they can come out and do handle those curb ramps and install those curb ramps prior, prior to the asphalt being laid. So it's, this guidance, this law from the Civil Rights Act, says that as long as those ramps are installed prior to or at the same time as the asphalt or the concrete work, whatever works being performed on that road adjacent site, adjacent roadway, you're in compliance. And I ran through some scenarios for the different agencies to say, you know, slurry seals, maintenance, so the project A, if you had a current fiscal year plan, on the left, that's what, what it was before this guidance. So they had slurry seal, no fill, microsurfacing, and reconstruction. Well, how does this technical guidance affect them? Project A was unchanged. Project B, they had to add the installed curb ramp. Now, that could be A. They could add it to the, if, say you're at 30% design plans. Well, you can add that work into the set of plans before the contractor gets a hold of it. Say you're at the 90% phase. Well, then maybe you handle it with a separate contract. Several states have indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contracts that they can handle through a separate contractor to get that work done prior to the payment. Project C in this scenario um, is microsurfing, microsurfing on the interstate, so there's no sidewalks, no, no worries. And Project E was a full reconstruction, and it already included the curb break work, so it didn't affect me. I'm gonna, it, we're at the question point. I try to make it quicker so we leave more time for questions and to get your 
And here's my contact information as well as my team's information. To get your questions started, I would like to give you, I want to give you guys a question, raise your hands if you know the answer to this. If I'm paving, this, this is the road. This whole wall is the road. This is the direction we're going. We're paving this direction. And this is right here, this, this board is our intersection. Here's these black curtains are the crosswalks. Here's the crosswalks going across the street this way and crosswalks going that way. I am putting in a mill and fill on this road right here. Do I, and there's curb ramps on each one of these, do I have to verify that these curb ramps meet standards on all four intersections or just the, the ramps that cross the road? So, answer A. If you want to say that I only have to worry about the ramps that go perpendicular to the road that I'm paving, that's a raise your hand for A. If, raise, um, don't raise your hand if you think all the curb ramps have to be addressed. All curb ramps and all directions have to be addressed. Okay, so four people. The correct answer is A. You do not have to, if you are not paving in this direction, if this road here is not being paved, you do not have to address those curb ramps in those other directions. Only the ones that are affected by the, the crosswalks that you're paving over. So that helps out. Do we have any other questions? If it met the 1991 standards, if it met the 91, you don't have to do anything, but it should be in the ADA transition plan. Right? So it does have to be addressed, but it doesn't have to be handled on that particular project. Yes, sir. Here, not one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So if there's eight ramps in our intersection, we only have to address the two. Okay. So we've also had the just for information, we've also had the pavement patch question where it's ten foot by ten foot, no, you don't have to touch for a ten foot ten foot pavement patch in the middle of the two intersections. But we then said what if the pavement patch was a thousand foot? Next question. I just have a question. What is the ramifications for the agency that does not do this? I mean, if there's agencies that continue to do overlays and things like that, that do not upgrade their um, facility? It depends on the exact scenario, but um, obviously the complainant, the citizen putting in the uh, complaint, go to court and sue, and they would most likely win. So the ramifications. The agency would be held responsible for the lawsuit. Um, also, another way, which is very hard, Federal Highway only has less than 3,000 employees. There's no way for us to police every section. But, but if we do get wind of it, the citizens do call us, believe it or not. They call us and complain. We get lots of complaints. Um, they're in it, and we find that there's truth to it. Other programs, other projects can be affected based on that project. Even though there's no federal funds on Project A, they could withhold funds on Project B until Project A is handled properly. So that's, that's the ramifications. How was it decided which service treatment was going to be maintenance and which wasn't approved? It was a bunch of people in a room. Uh, I was not privy to that room. <laughs> it was before, uh, before I got there, but uh, apparently, uh, they had, I'm uh, making this up, 15 people in a room work it out. And like I said, the Department of Justice said potholes are the only thing we consider in. So through negotiations, there was no element because some states were saying, well, three quarters of an inch or less is maintenance. Anything more than three quarters is an alteration. We grouped that. While other states said, no, it's, if I'm milling down a half inch and I'm putting back a half inch, I'm doing 0% elevation. I'm good to go. No, that's not the case either. It's the public perception. It's the Department of Justice's point of view. It's the public perception is that we are doing major work on this roadway. We need to address the accessibility for all the public. Any other questions? Um, under a chip seal treatment, if you were doing spot shim for spot repairs prior to that treatment, what would be your uh, interpretation of that? It depends on how big the spot is. We agree with, um, like, friction course right before an intersection for like, the 100 foot uh, downhill, and you're trying to get the people to stop before an intersection, and it, it's specifically to deal with accidents on that intersection. That would be considered a spot treatment, and you would that would be maintenance. That would not be an alteration. But if you did like a full width shim prior to the chip seal, we that would be a full yeah, of the scope that might be considered an alteration. Because we also have the question of related utilities. Say you're doing utilities along the whole curb and it goes the whole length of the, the street down to the intersection, then it's an alteration. If it went perpendicular to the street or a third of the street, then that's considered maintenance. So it gets dicey, and that's when I get the lawyers involved. Because <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for those answers. Any other questions? Yes, sir. And we literally had hundreds of questions and we're putting all, we compiled the questions and answers. It's, it's, it's the process is longer than I'd like. It's going through council, the lawyers right now. So we post it on the website. So all these frequently asked questions with the appropriate answers can be seen by everybody. About two years ago, Minnesota DOT was given a national safety award for using microservicing in high accident locations. So,
microsurfacing is considered an alteration. It's, but, yeah. but you're going to slurry in as a compliance area, which is maintenance. So you 200 feet away from the intersection? I don't know. 